Welcome back to Straight Facts, live on the football terrace. It was an amazing weekend of football, but it's all starting again. The week of football is beginning tonight. FA Cups games we're going to be looking at. Transfer news today. The title race. Getting Lee's reaction to the North London derby. Lee's reaction to the Mudrick situation. Arsenal already looking to move on. Looking at Moussa Diaby at Leverkusen. All of that to come, including the potential sacking of Antonio Conte Ooh. and the return of Poch. It's like a movie. It's like a movie. Poch strikes back. Return of Pochettino. I don't know, but we've got lots to delve into. But first of all, how are you, Lee? How are you, my friend? I'm very well, man. I'm good. I'm good. I, I gave myself a little challenge at the start of the year, Terry, because everyone thinks I'm a raging alcoholic. So I'm going from now to the 5th of June, my birthday with no beer. And we're on day 17. Easy when you put your mind to it, isn't it? Uh, I'd like to pick up all my haters in the chat. They're, they've come back again for another week. But I appreciate it. And uh, big up to all the people who do like the content. Uh, yeah. appreciate you as well. <laughs> when, do you, when do you get your first coin after not drinking? Like, when do you get your first coin? Do you get <laughs> hey, do you know what? Terry, I've, got, I've I had to order more water uh, yesterday. Yeah, and I've got this app where they come. You know, like when you're in the office and you have the big drums of water and you get hot and cold? Yeah. Uh, I've, got, I've got a machine in the kitchen, but I've... I had 76 litres of water turn up the other week and I've done them inside 10 days. <laughs> so Jeez. I had to get more water turn up. I, Mate, I've like, not I stopped going you, to the bathroom. I can't I, lie. I bet you feel good, though. When you drink that much water, first few days, it's weird, and then suddenly your body feels really good. Mm. So well done, you, my friend. No, That's good. Great, and, yeah, listen, I, it's one of those things. Like, I'm a bit like, I enjoy a drink, there's, mm. but there's a difference between being a, enjoying a drink and being an alcoholic. Um, exactly. There genuinely is, like... Alcoholics don't function too great. Um, <laughs> like I know, I know, because I've got one in my family, so I definitely know. Um, mm. We're gonna. There's lots to delve into today, and I don't really know where to start. If I'm being honest, because there's so much that's going on. We will talk Arsenal. We will talk Mudrik. We will talk Derby. We will talk Manchester United. We will talk North London Derby. Um, we are going to start with that. I just wanted to start off first of all um, with the, the, the situation surrounding. Actually, we'll start off with the, the situation. I want to start with Man United with you today because Man United, of course. I mean, first of all, what's your reaction to the Manchester derby? Because the North London derby kind of overshadowed it because of the, I think, not just the win for Arsenal, but the, the, the shenanigans afterwards. It was a day later. But United came from behind to beat Man City to put themselves in many people's eyes into a title race. It solidified the great run of form they're on. Rashford scoring in the ninth home game on the bounce and I think the seventh or eighth football match on the bounce. But what was your reaction to it? What was your feelings that, you know, United coming back in that way? I think United are back, Terry. I think they're back. It's nice to have you back. I think we might both be back. It's like the old days, isn't it? As I said this earlier on my stream. It's like, it's like when you, you had a girlfriend 15 years ago and you think, oh, I wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> yeah. I like, and you've got your house sorted, you've got your bank sorted, you've got your cars sorted. And you think, oh, let me just slide in the DMs to see how she's doing. And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. My house is cool. I've got my, my, my banks up. Everything's cool. Yeah, maybe we should meet for dinner. It's like, it's like Arsenal and Man United now. It's like we've been in the doldrums for so long. And now we're finally looking like we're doing what's required to, um, to compete again. And, and listen, I've never mugged Man United off because I grew up on Arsenal Man United. Like Tottenham, we'll come to that later. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but Man United, they, they've always been the, the rival for me. They've always been the one like when you're growing up, it was Fergie Wenger, like it was King Vieira and all of that. Was, even under George Graham, when we were having fights up at Old Trafford and that. Uh, it, it's, it was great, man. So it's nice that you're you're finally getting back on track. And uh, in terms of the derby, the goal was 100% offside. Yeah, if you take, if you 100%, bro, I don't care. Yeah, you beat Man City, so you've done us a favour. <laughs> I genuinely couldn't care less. I think most Arsenal fans are, that, are of that mindset. We don't care if it's offside. No, we don't care. It went in. 100% it's offside. If if um, if um Rashford wasn't there and you took him out, the goalkeeper knows that it's only Bruno that's taken the shot. With him being there, he now has to guess which one's taken the shot. It's offside. He's interfering with play. Yeah, but so I don't care, man. The first half, I think that was probably the best first half of football I've seen United play all season. Then Martial went off and it kind of fell apart a little bit. Um, 
but then you you got back you got back on track, man, and you ended up getting the win. As soon as you scored that first goal, I knew you're going to win the game. And Man City, by the way, you can have Haaland and all of this, and and you know you can score as many a million goals every year if you want Haaland. Yeah, if you don't win anything, then it all becomes irrelevant, doesn't it? Right, and and they've I've seen people saying that they're a worse team, right? Um, overall, they've only can see. Um, sorry, they've only scored slightly less amount of goals at this stage uh, this season than last season. It's only a few goals in it. I think I think the stat was like 2.65 goals per game or something compared to 2.55 goals per game. So there's not a massive amount of difference in how many goals they're scoring, but you can tell by their patterns of play, it's completely different. They're more predictable. Yeah, Jesus has gone, Sterling's gone, Zinchenko's gone, Cancelo's on the bench, looks like he could be on his way out. And... Um, yeah, man, City City are wobbling at the minute, really wobbling, and they're, they're too predictable. And it's funny because Liverpool are the same. I know we're going to come to them in a bit, but both of them went out and bought a striker and done decent dough on a striker, and both of them have become extremely predictable. Like they've changed their play well, style well, completely. Of course, look, we, well, actually, we can kind of loop into the Liverpool conversation just just because I think it's come up organically in that way. Liverpool and I watched match of the day on on Saturday. Um, or I may have watched it on Sunday when I got back from the studio. I don't actually remember. The weekend just feels like a blur to me, to be honest. It was it was absolutely crazy. You was, was in a hotel when you Terry. I'm not surprised. Yeah, well, we went out. We, we, we went out. It was just his birthday. So the Football Terrace crew, we all kind of met up. So it was like, I finished my match reaction for Liverpool, jumped in the car, drove to London, recorded the Mudrick video, went out, had a good night, got up in the morning, went studio, and it was two games back to back and then driving home. And I live far. It was just like a whirlwind. But I was watching the the, the, way, the breakdown of City's game, and there were so many opportunities against United to play Haaland in. And City are not a direct team, so they didn't play the pass. People are blaming Haaland for why they're not playing well. I'm blaming Pep. Pep mm. isn't allowing his players to play direct football. He wants them to, you know, Tiki Taka is alive and well, but it doesn't help. You need that's why someone like Rashford would not do well for a Pep because Rashford's so good when you're playing in a team that is willing to go direct at the right times. The opportunity he really should have scored in the first half where uh, Fred wins the ball, plays it to Rashford, who knocks it inside to uh, Ericsson, and then he runs, part, and then Ericsson just does a one-two of him, basically, past Rodri, and he goes through. Good goalkeeping for Edison to smother him. That doesn't happen very often at uh, City because they don't want to play that ball. Ericsson would have got the ball and then spread it out wide. And they, they showed so many footage, so much footage of that happening. Liverpool is very similar as well. Liverpool fans keep DMing me saying, how dare you criticise our season? We've had loads of injuries. Um, and, and then you look at the facts. You just go through their Premier League games only and just look at their draws and their defeats. And you look at the starting lineup. In, mo in most of their games, their superstars are all playing. Yes, they've had injuries, but it isn't as though they've been playing 80% of the season with no Alisson, no Van Dijk, no Robertson. No Thiago, no no Mo Salah, no 60, 70 million pound Darwin Nunes. You know, they've had this. And even with the players that are returning, they've got Naby Keita and Ox on the pitch. That's 110 million pounds of purchasing they did. So they have no excuse, these teams. Like City and Liverpool have no excuse for their drop-off this year at all. They're not even going through what Chelsea are going through, which is ownership change, structural change, leadership at the board level change, managerial change. Huge amount of change in the dressing room because the amount of players they've bought. It doesn't make it right, but at least there's a reason. Liverpool and City, they don't have an excuse other than certain teams, Newcastle being one, United being another, Arsenal that we'll come to later being, being, the, being the most important one here, who have just gone to next levels. And it's really highlighting how bad they are. Because years gone by, Man United, Man United, Newcastle wouldn't be here. And Man United and Arsenal would have similar or, or even less points than Liverpool at this point, even though Liverpool have been bad. And then when Liverpool click and push on, they'd have left us behind. They're just being exposed because of how much better everybody else is. So, yeah, Liverpool are in real trouble. And I think they're going to get knocked out of the FA Cup by Wolves tonight. Like, I think Wolves will knock them out of the FA Cup. If they're anything like they were against Brighton, and we spoke about this on the top six show, did you watch the Brighton game? Yeah, yeah, I watched it, yeah. They didn't just get beat 3 0. When you actually look, just look back at it, that could have been about 7 0. It was in the first <laughs> half, they had 70% of the ball, Brighton, 61% in the entire game. They had almost three times the amount of shots. They weren't mm. just like better. 
they annihilated them. And Wolves have been a, li- a lot better under on, on the long. Wolves should have knocked them out of the cup anyway. Oh, that, they got that, they, they got that they got wasn't offside, side, was it? Let's be honest. So no, they're lucky they're even in the cup. It it it, it definitely it definitely wasn't. Someone actually here says Lee was right about Salah. <laughs> Lee was right about Mo Salah. <laughs> hey, can I just say, yeah, Danny Welbeck's goal. Danny Welbeck's goal. Mohamed Salah must have been looking on, thinking, "Wow, if only I could do that." Uh, <laughs> he's been rubbish, isn't he, Salah? Let's let's be honest. I and mean, this is the thing, right? Both both Man City and and Liverpool, both their managers are extremely arrogant. Like they they just think that they can keep doing what they're doing and not really changing it. Pep's got more about him than Klopp. Klopp just has one style of play. That's it. Yeah. yeah like, and then he won't change up formations. He won't pull players out and play them in different positions. Right, unless he has loads of injuries, then he'll start playing Fabinho at centre back and stuff like that. But but Pep's Pep's got a better squad. Yeah. And listen, Man City are still there. And let's not take nothing for granted. Like, yes, we're clear of them by eight points, but Man City can go on a run. Yes, Liverpool have done that before, but there's nothing to suggest they're going to do that this season. Man City, as bad as they've been, they're still nine uh, eight points behind us, which We've seen him claw back points before, Terry, very easily. And, and listen, we'll come to Arsenal in a bit. But for Liverpool, that Brighton game, I watched it. I like watching Brighton play. They play good football, attacking football. They've got some good players. And, mate, it was men against boys in that game. It was embarrassing for Liverpool. Like, somebody needs to check Fabinho's passport. There's no way that guy's Brazilian. Like, I'm sorry, there's no way he's Brazilian. <laughs> mate, he, he, he needs some WD-40. He's so stiff. It takes him forever to turn. He's always out of position. He doesn't track runners. Yeah, his passing's rubbish. Like, and he just looks like he's running in treacle, like super slow motion. Like, the fall off for Liverpool has been mad. Right, and and the thing is, they keep going out there and buying attacking players. Why? They needed midfielders in the summer, and they've still not gone and sorted yeah. midfield yet. The, the, the fact and the fact that I know that FSG are trying to sell, but football fans don't like the idea of seasons being their season being written off, and essentially that's what Liverpool are doing. City can still come back. City could still win the league. City, they have the the tools they're available. But Liverpool look shot. And I think, I said it yesterday, I think the players are done with Klopp. I think they're they're over him. I don't think they want him to be there anymore. Um, I think think they're in a real mess that way. I've I've seen a lot of Liverpool fans saying, we've got to give him time, let him get to the summer, you know, rebuild, go again. Mate, that's the whole reason Arsenal wasted a decade because of sentiment. Yeah, well done, Klopp. You've done a good job. You won us the league. You won us the Champions League. You won us a couple of cups. Adios. Bye-bye. Yeah, and then go and find someone else. But then all you get out of Liverpool fans is, but who else could come in and do better? Well, would they do any worse? Different ideas, fresh fresh ideas, fresh manager in there, you know, yeah. and, and and move on from there. Because all I keep seeing him doing is exactly the same as what he's been been doing very well and very successfully since he's got there. Going with the same tried and tested well, that tried and tested ain't working anymore and you ain't got another idea. Like, and then he just stands there with his stupid faces. Like One minute he's doing that stupid laugh, like smile. Next thing he's like, head down. Yeah, like, uh. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, he, he's, he's, yeah, he's he looks, he just, ideas. He, looks, he has no idea what to do this, going forward. And this notion of who could come in and do better, the logic's flawed because at some point, good, bad or indifferent, Klopp's going to leave. You, and and if he has a few more, listen, he'll never undo his legacy. He won their first title in 30 years. But the longer he stays and underperforms, the way you feel about look, it's probably taken a lot of Arsenal fans, probably until now, really, when the football's coming back and you're good again, to totally forgive Wenger. Because when he first left, some people didn't didn't want him gone. That that has to be said. But there's a lot of people that had a period of time. It maybe took two or three years after he left for, for Arsenal fans to be like, oh, listen, now the dust has settled. I love you again. Man United fans, so a lot of people turned on Oli that was a club legend. Once he's been gone long enough and we're back to doing what we're doing, certain people that turned on him that like hated him for a while will love him again. And they always say the closest emotion to love is actually hate. You know, you, you can't hate people that you never liked before. It's, it's kind of hard on uh, uh, in that level. Oh, maybe we should tell that to all my haters in the chat, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. But on, but on, but on Man United, though, just, just, back, just back to them, look, I do... I, the poll I've actually got running on this stream actually is asking, are Man United in the title race? And 44% have said yes. 14% have said no chance. 43% have said let's talk after the Arsenal game. Mm. And, and I think and we'll, we'll, we will kind of end it by me and you kind of, I won't be getting your, your take on that because we won't speak until after. But Man United being back is an interesting one. 
I, I want I want to put pressure on us to say we're in the title race. And the reason that I want to do that is I want to see if that if that pressure bursts pipes or creates a diamond. I, I think the fans should put a nice amount of pressure on them. But if we but not we have to win the league. But I want us to maintain this. Even if you beat us at the weekend, I don't want to be finishing the season 15, 18, 20, 21 points off the top. I want us to close that gap down. How we do that, I think the return of Jaden Sancho and his impact on the team and how well Veghorst does. Th those two, so those two, one signing and one returning player, that's going to be, for me, the difference because we need the extra bodies. As great as Casemiro is looking, as great as Rashford is looking, you need more bodies coming in. If we keep having to play th th those two and everyone around them for the rest of this concertina season, I think we could burn out. That's just a fear I've got. Having those two to come in and rotate, if Veghorst can come in as that number nine and the ball can stick. You saw, as you said, that first 20 minutes in that second half, when the ball wasn't sticking, that we couldn't we couldn't play our game. And I think Veghorst, is, that's what he's coming in for, to hold that ball up, to bring Rashford, Anthony, Sancho, Martial into the game, Bruno into the game from an attacking point of view. And I hope that happens. But look, we're we're in this title race. I'm 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 very I'm very kind of confident in the fact that we can beat Palace. They're a hard team to beat, but I think we can beat Palace, go to within six points of you, and then we will go into the game against Arsenal, which is it is it's probably the best Man United Arsenal game. I'm gonna say since we knocked you out of the Champions League in 2009. And the reason I say that, because since then, I don't know if there's been one as significant in the sense of titles on the line there's been fa cup games we know that but we haven't <laughs> met in the champions league since then we haven't played each other where we're trying to get into that title race or you're in it i just don't remember us i just don't remember that happening since that point you fell off or when you've been in it and when you was second under jose or ollie or whatever it was or both yeah um, he was nowhere near was we yeah exactly so i think it's the, probably the most significant you've got to beat palace first listen i think you will beat palace like yeah, i, no, I, I see them against tottenham the other night they were shot in the second half we certainly have to. And that's why as a United fan, I'm not pre predicting or talking about the Arsenal game in depth until after the Palace match. But mm. I want to put pressure on the team to say, listen, go out there and do it. Show you show you what you're made of. Let's, let's move this progression forward because it, it's been a brilliant start under life under Ten Hag. After the opening two games till now, the progression has been amazing. We're playing great football. I, I saw us being laughed at for celebrating beating easy teams. And what's laughable about pundits saying that? Is that for 10 whole years? And do you know how long 10 years is? And if you're not from the UK, this may not make sense. <laughs> but you will go, to, but most of you have gone to school, I, I assume. That's senior school twice. So I remember being in senior school. There's five years in senior school in England from year seven to you leaving year 11 of my age group. Those five years were like forever. They took forever. It's like doing that twice. Like, do you get what I'm saying? People that were 10 years old are now 20 years old. The last time Man United went on a run where we beat the teams we should beat this convincingly on the on the bounce. Ten years. Amazing ago. what happens when you get rid of Ronaldo, isn't it? Well, I, th I think it's I th look, Ronaldo's part <laughs> of it, but, but I don't think it's necessarily Ronaldo the 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 individual. It's it was the message and the manager being given control, and a lot of people are saying, "Look, you get a good manager, look what happens." And I'm saying yes, but it's also built upon the fact that. Even the way he was allowed to drop Rashford, the way he's handled Maguire, the fact that Luke Shaw is starting as a centre-back, Maguire's on the bench. Are you seeing leaks? Are you seeing leaks coming out the dressing room? Are you seeing... Oh, it's been brilliant, by the way. Sorry? Oh, he has been. He has been. But the, 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 the culture of the club is changing. Is it perfect yet? I would probably say not. But that culture change is there, meaning there is a foundation to build upon tactically. Therefore, you're getting results on the football pitch. And... Uh, as this says here, let's hope Casemiro gets a yellow card tomorrow. Yeah, no one wants to go up against oh, Casemiro. Is he one away, is he? One away. If he gets Ooh. that yellow. See, we got, out, we got out of White Hart Lane without Saliba and Saka getting booked, so we're sweet. So yeah, as, yeah. as long as they don't get booked against you, I think it then goes up to 10 games after that. Yeah, 10 yellow cards after that, mm. and then you're okay. Yeah, which which are pretty much okay on. So, look, it's, it's going to be an interesting week, but I think United are in a good space. And, and Rashford, he's, he's on world-class levels right now, as in he's his performances. Right. He's on fire, and listen, he's now playing at the level that I always knew he could is get he fit, to. Is he going to be fit for the Arsenal game, though? Because I see like, he's not really 100%, is he? I reckon you might rest him to, uh, tomorrow. And then yeah, I, 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 I kind of, yeah, well, I, I want to rest him, 
at the same time, you've as long as he's fit, you've got to go and get those three points. I think that I was worried, but by like sort of the middle of the second half, he was sprinting again and he wasn't pulling up. So I, I think he's okay. Um, and I, and I also think as well, the fact that you have this game on Wednesday gives us like the edge because we've got a whole <laughs> week just to relax and chill and get the training methods going again. Like, whereas you've got to get ready for another game literally just after you've beaten Man City. No, I I, I agree. You, you, that definitely, I mean, the fact they moved our Palace game into this midweek, I was fuming about, you know, and it's like when we... It's a conspiracy. Had... They're all against us. <laughs> well, they did, it, they did it a couple of seasons ago where they moved their games around. Just on the, on the offside goal, though, because people are calling it out. I don't want to hear from City fans because Rodri wasn't given offside for being in this position two seasons ago against Villa. So... I don't it care. Was offside though, Terry. I mean, listen, it, it so I, I've had this debate with a lot of people. I think the law that that sort of loophole in the law is wrong. I get mm. why people call it interfering. But in terms of by the law, he wasn't because he didn't touch the ball or he didn't stop a kanji from getting to it. Now I get your point that Kanji st- stopped his run because he thought Rashford was offside, but within the law he got said, to the whistle. But yeah, you play to the whistle. If a Kanji keeps, this is what's crazy. If a Kanji runs at that ball full pelt, tries to get around Rashford to get it and can't get there, then Rashford's offside because he has physically stopped the player from getting there. Essentially, what it has to be is you have to physically impose on a defender. You not running to the ball because you think he's going to be given offside because he is offside isn't interfering because there's no physical stopping of the. Does that make sense? Like, it's, mm. it's, it's, a, it's a yeah. The, the law, the law, is stupid. So, Terry, if you take him out of that picture. And I see somebody put it on Instagram without him in the picture. It just looks ridiculous. Like, no, no, he doesn't. No, no, out on his goal, he, and he's he like, does. Well, "Does he hit it or does he hit it?" And now we don't know what he right. he does. That, that it is absolutely right what you're saying, but you play to that whistle, and City didn't. They didn't do it. That it, it was their mistake, and United benefited from the loophole. The same as mm. Liverpool benefited from the loophole of if a defender deliberately plays the ball when they're offside. Then most the goal against Wolves, and most Salah was onside because it was deemed to be deliberately played, like it was going to be a the defender was trying to head the ball back to the goalkeeper, and he messed it up. There are small little loopholes in this offside. However, I did listen to someone talk last night, and they were essentially saying that if you get rid of the this this law that you you're only offside if you actively try and play the ball, lots more goals will be disallowed from inactive players who are always in offside positions. A lot, you know, a lot of the times there's great shots from outside the box from a corner, the amount of times that happens and there is someone in a non-active offside position, that means all those goals are going to start getting wiped out. So for the occasional one like this, they're probably not going to get rid of it, in my opinion. But we but we will see. Uh, by the way, people, I haven't missed any Super Chats. I've just starred them for later when they're in a more relevant conversation. I'm getting a bit of an echo from you, Lee. I don't know where that's coming from at all. Um, as someone said, Terry, it was offside. Take it as it is. But, bro- is but Monica, yeah. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, Monica, you're not li- Monica, you're not listening. It isn't offside by the law. It's a loophole. In the- that's what I'm trying to say to people. It should be, but it isn't, and and that's the way it is. Um, smash the well, like. Quickly, everyone's saying Casemiro will definitely get a yellow tomorrow. Mate, the amount of fouls that guy gets away with without getting a yellow, I very much doubt it. <laughs> yeah. It's literally about seven a game. Yeah, no, I, it it is what it is, and I know it's 100 percent facts and logic, my guy. Um, it just it is what it is. Um, it, it is great facts, and, and I'll give you one the example. You'll see it if watch, watch the next three games you watch, and it's going to happen three or four times in a match. And you'll go, Oh, yeah, there'll be a player offside, the flag will stay down, and he'll run towards the ball, and the flag will not go up until he touches it. Yeah, that, can... that, that winds me up. That does so, so it, it, uh, yeah, but but the point I'm making is this tonight, Darwin Nunes could be offside and running through on goal, he could sprint hard towards the ball and stop well, he it. He did it, he did it, didn't hang he? On, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, against Wolves. Yeah, he can sprint towards it, be an inch away and stop. And if Mo Salah runs from an onside position and gets the ball, it's not offside. But mm. if the goalkeeper goes, I'm, sta- I'm staying on my line and not coming for it because Darwin's off. And then Mo Salah runs from an onside position, takes the ball and scores. It's a legal goal. But you will see it happen in tonight's game with Liverpool and Wolves at least once where a player will sprint towards the ball, but they wait for him to touch it to be offside. That's all that happened with Rashford. Rashford didn't touch it. Goal. Um, anyway, um, what do you guys think of Qatar to Liverpool rumours? Uh, look, I, I think there's, at the moment, there is nothing concrete about any nation or any group buying Man United, Liverpool or, or Spurs. Everything is spec- speculative at the moment. If they get that kind of ownership at Liverpool, 
then they're moving up levels in the same way Newcastle, the same way City, the same way Chelsea under Roman did, uh, is, is I think what we'd say to that, my friend. And But they definitely need it. Someone says, no, nah, that's not right. Uh, you, yeah, again, there's not being right, but there's being in, in the law. And in the law, it's a goal. Like, stop arguing with the law and saying it's wrong. It isn't wrong, it's right. Just say the law is wrong. Like, you've got to get the, you, 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 anal- the terminology is very, very important. Clap, I've seen players flag for offside without touching the ball. Yes, when they're running into a wide position, not a goal-scoring position, that is the protocol. So if they're running towards the corner flag with the ball, they'll be given as offside earlier. They're running straight through on goal. They won't be until they touch the ball. Because if they flag them offside and then it turns out it's not offside, the VAR can't do anything. Whereas if they they go in and score... Then VAR can decide whether well, it was offside or not. If they flag them and the whistle, if the whistle goes before the ball across the line, there's nothing they can do. So that's why they do it that way. Right? If Rashford was running towards the corner flag and they put the flag up and the whistle went and the ball hadn't gone in, it'd be different. So again, I, what I would say to people is learn the law and the protocol, and you'll be less angry at these decisions. Um, moving moving on from this, moving on from this, um, I wanted to get your take on 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 the transfer news relating to Arsenal today. Actually, I wanted to get your take on this. So. There's a big oh, story. It's Jack and Ori yeah. time, isn't it? Yeah, there's a big story circulating um, today that so Arsenal have made initial uh, contact with Bayern Leverkusen over Musa Diaby. Leverkusen uh, do not want to sell mid-season, um, but they have been. They they and they were quoting prices of sort of 100 million euros in the summer. Of course, this stems after Liverpool have missed out on signing. Uh, Mudrik, uh, as an example, so there's money to spend. It's not the first journalist to talk about this deal, they're talking about it being this one being on. Um, excited about about bringing uh, Musa Diaby in, or do you think the money that you've not spent so far on Jao Felix and Mudrik should be should be spent elsewhere? Elsewhere, and he can't be trusted, Darmesh Chef. That guy has got no sources at all. <laughs> I'm not even lying, Terry. I've got better sources at Arsenal Football Club than Sky Sports. I'm not even lying. Terry, when we signed Pepe, I said on a stream or a video, Lacazette showed him around the training ground. Two days later, Arsenal dropped the video on their YouTube channel. When we signed Matt Ryan, not a single journalist on the planet mentioned Matt Ryan was signing for Arsenal. But I did. I tweeted it two days before. How can, how can, I, how can I also say, on a stream on deadline day, the season we signed Tierney, Tini's completed his medical. He's in Sopwell House Hotel. Four hours later, Sky Sports go, Kieran Tini's on his way from Glasgow to do a medical. No, he was sat in Sopwell House reception, mate. <laughs> like, how were my sources better than Sky Sports? I ignore everything they say. Thank God we do not have Sky Sports in Spain. Like, they do not have a Spanish version of Sky. Thank God. They are in the gutter. Yeah, they regurgitate the same rubbish 24 hours a day. Yeah, and they just change the words. Who's the other one? What's his name? Um, Cava, yeah, that the Sky Cava, that guy, man. I'm sorry, that that how they are nicking a living still is a miracle, Terry. Yeah, it is a miracle. As for that guy, um, the RB, I think everyone's forgotten the Bundesliga hasn't been played for three months, they haven't had a game for three months, Terry. <laughs> Why are we looking at Bundesliga players? No disrespect, that league's trash anyway. That's not in the top five leagues in Europe. Take Bayern Munich out, and it's literally League One. Yeah, like, and yeah, cool. He, he, he can run fast. Whoopee. Like, sorry, mate. No disrespect. I am done and dusted with all of these compilation merchants. I'm done and dusted with all of these people that are bigging up this player and bigging up. Like, so the way fans go on these days, not just for Arsenal, but for all clubs, it's like they watch every league. Like, it's like they, it's literally like they are Soccer Saturday. They've got cameras and like TV screens set up. It's like they're sat in a big, big room like this. With multiple screens. Oh my God, let's go to the Alliance. There's a goal. Musa Diaby scored against Bayern. I get in the bin. Uh, and I've already seen, right? I typed in Musa Diaby on YouTube. Three hours ago, somebody put a compilation video out on YouTube. That, like, come on, it's ridiculous. Yeah, Terry, 100 million euros is now, because of this Mudrik, now the going rate. And because Edu cocked that deal up, yeah, we're coming to Mudrik in a bit, so I'll, I'll, I'll move on quickly. But because he messed that deal up, he has now alerted the whole world that we have up to 100 million euros to spend. Well done, Edu, whilst he's swanning around Poland on club expenses. Like, ridiculous. Absolutely perfect. 
for 100 million pounds, which, well, let's say 88 million pounds is 100 million euros. We could go and get Zaha, Trossard, Tillemans and still have change. And now we've got three bench options with Smith Rowe, Tomiyasu, Tierney and Vieira. Now our bench looks half decent, doesn't it? Instead, we're sitting again. Oh, let's go for Rafinha. Let's go for Diaby. Let's go for Declan Rice. Oh, let's go. Get in the bin, man. We ain't signing none of these players. The only one I'd imagine that we're going to sign out the players with active. Mitoma's the latest one the hipsters like. Played 13 times for, for Brighton. He can run 100 mile an hour. Great dribbler, by the way. Uh, very close drib, um, control with his dribbling. But he's played 13 games. All of a sudden, the compilations are out about Matoma. Oh, let's go and sign him. He's played 13 games in the Premier League. And he ain't even completed all of them. Like, just slow down. Stop overrating players that don't, like, have a, con a consistency over 50, 60, 100 games. Like, I know there's up-and-coming players, Terry. Like, but come on. Like, let's have it right here. First off, that Bundesliga is trash. You've got to go through the track record of players that have come from that in recent times in forward positions. Shy Havertz, Timo Werner. There's two I've named straight away. Do you know what I'm saying? Both of them have flopped, didn't they? Yeah, one of them's gone back to Germany and the other one, he might as well leave because he ain't required at Chelsea anymore. Like, people overrate players based off a couple of stats or, oh, they did it against Real Madrid or, oh, they got an assist in that. Get in the bin, man. Yeah, start rating them when they come to your club and start producing at your football club. Sancho's another one. Thank you. Yeah, start doing it at the football club that you support, then start overrating them or rating them, whatever. Yeah, Don't start I mean, overrating players based off of absolutely nothing. So I, I, I do get I do get that element. I mean, some Bundesliga players, Harlem being one, I think Son come from the Bundesliga, Ballas, you know, you know, I just off the top of my head, like Owen Hargreaves came from there. I mean, the only oh, hit, look how far back we're going here, Tell. So. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm just one, that, another that, one. Cool. That, but look that, how far that, back we're going. I'm talking attacking wide positions. Yeah, in the last five years, no, most I, of them I, have come so to the I, Premier. I, I, um, Leon Bailey's another one, okay, by the way. So I, 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 so I, I get that. Uh, I, I do get that. I, I think though, I, I wanted to touch on something else rather than that. What you just said, that I think is actually more important. Mm -hmm. The world does now know. I mean, the the Shakhtar CEO came out today and just managed being very. I mean, everyone thinks Todd Bowley's revealing. This guy's just come out. Yep, Arsenal offered the hundred million, the same as the same as Arsenal. Um, were you shocked when you saw that him speak about that today? He's, he's done it with the Athletic, and he's done it as well with Talk Sport. He's basically just said that our, Chelsea's terms were better in terms of like it was easier to get the bonuses from Chelsea than it was Arsenal. Um, but I suppose from your point of view, how do you feel about because you didn't really want Mudrik, so you've missed out on him. So is that is it good news that Chelsea have taken him from you from your perspective? Yeah, fantastic. Like, just for one, well, for a many, many reasons, I can reel off 10 minutes worth of reasons why I didn't want him. Yeah, number one, this fan base sucked the life out of any player we'd link to. Yeah, like, the, the way they were calling him Ukrainian Neymar, putting, like, compilations out, already welcome to welcome to Arsenal videos on YouTube about him. Like, ridiculous. Absolutely pathetic. Nobody watches Shakhtar Donetsk in the Ukrainian League. But they've seen him in the Champions League. Oh, well done. You watched him twice. Whoopee. Well, so now, now all of a sudden, he's worth 100 million euros. Yeah, David Ornstein as well. I want to call him out as well, Terry, because that guy actively sat on Sky Sports and multiple other platforms and said, publicly, the figure is 100 million, but privately, they're willing to take less. Well, that went well, didn't it, mate? Yeah, so stop listening to him because he's got, I can read off 10 things he's got wrong in the last two years. Yeah, so stop, he only tells you what the club want him to tell yeah, but you. I would, I would say this, though, not in defence of them, but to be fair... This is where fans. I don't think it's. I don't look at the journalists as of getting this wrong. I don't. I used to, and I, having spoke to journalists, my mind has changed. What ends up happening, and football fans want to ignore this, and I don't really understand why. David Ornstein isn't con in control of what clubs do in the sense of. I, I kind of asked this to Ben Jacobs, and Ben Jacobs kind of alluded to it. I think they were willing to take less than 100 million euros because Arsenal were the front runners and nobody else was in. As soon as Chelsea came in and said, we're prepared to pay it, that changes everything. OK, hold on. Hold on. Let me stop you there. Chelsea came in and said nothing like that, Terry. Was you in the room? Why didn't they put a bid in there and then when he was when when the hierarchy was sat watching the Man City game then? Because the it took how many weeks later? Two weeks. Yeah, the reason that, yeah, but what they did in that two weeks is spend time talking to the, the, play, the player and his agent 
to convince the player to sign because what clubs typically don't do is put in formal bids until they know the player is going to okay, join. This, this is where your argument falls down, Terry, right? Because in that time, Arsenal made two bids. Right. Yeah, we'd already made a bid. Chelsea came in. Arsenal fans, everyone else, oh, no, it's just, why would he go to a club built on Russian money? Well, that went well as well, didn't it? Yeah, money talks and BS walks, right? It's football, yeah? Oh, but he chose Chelsea over Arsenal. No, he didn't. Yeah, Chelsea were the only club that had a bid accepted, according to the media. But now we've heard from this guy today, and he said, well, two, oh, two offers from the same. Were they if wrong you know, again, the media? No, no, but if, if, if Mudrick would have said to Chelsea... I don't care what you offer me. I'm only joining Arsenal. Chelsea's mm. bid being accepted would become irrelevant. Not at all. Well, it would have done because, because if the... Arsenal hadn't, if Arsenal hadn't a bid, hang on. If Arsenal hadn't had a bid accepted, and Chelsea put a bid in, but he's already told them you can come with whatever you want. I'm not signing for you. Is he going to stay on less than a grand a week in a, in a war-torn country, playing in a league full of part-timers, but that, but or is he going to actually go? That, well, that, Arsenal ain't going to pay what I want. But that proves my point. point. But that proves my point. He did accept Chelsea's offer, therefore it mattered. But if if he would have said, "I'm not joining anybody," so I'll give you an example: Bruno Fernandez when he joined Manchester United, that you always get this talk. Oh, do you really want Bruno? No one else is interested in him. And then Bruno spoke about this afterwards. He said, "I told my agent explicitly, I will reject any offer from any other club. I only want Man United." What that did for Man United, it gave us the negotiating power because they wanted 70 million pound for him we ended up getting him for, for, for 47 million but if he was willing to join Barca willing to join Chelsea willing to join PSG and they were all bidding it would force Man United one to bid a higher amount because you want to give the first bid except oh, I understand that Terry it's, 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 Real Madrid what, what I mean is what, what I mean is say Bruno's but say Bruno's agent today tells David Ornstein he only wants to join Man United and then in four days time Bruno wakes up and changes his mind. That's not David Ornstein's fault. No, no, Terry, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. We had a bid for Mudrick. We spoke to Mudrick. We already knew Mudrick wanted to join us in the summer, in July. There's articles from July, Terry. We are now in the middle of June. If Arsenal wanted the player that badly, Chelsea wouldn't have even got to a stage of putting a bid in. Right. So let's just have that right for starters. Secondly, we put a bid in, which was, I think, £40 million pounds plus a few quid in add-ons. Well, hold on. We've been told the price is under a million euro. So why are you even going with a bid that was after that? Yeah. Then Chelsea come into the picture. Now Arsenal go and put another bid in, which was way less than they wanted. Then we go and put another bid in, which was less than what they wanted by €5 million, Euros, which is what was being reported by the likes of Ornstein and all these other people. 95 million, including the add-ons. Then we find out, bang, Chelsea, 100 mil. So then everyone's going, oh, but he's chose Chelsea over Arsenal. Well, he hasn't, because at that stage, we were under the impression that Arsenal never had a bid accepted, only Chelsea did. Now it's a choice of stay in a war-torn country or play for Chelsea. Then what our fans have done is then spun it. Oh, he's on 200 grand a week. We only offered 50. He's gone for the money. Absolute rubbish. We offered 127 grand a week. Anyone who's doubting that, yeah, well, you're doubting all the journalists then, aren't you? Because if you do, if you go on Google search right now and type in Mudrick Arsenal wages, it will come up with page after page of articles from these journalists saying we've offered 127 grand a week. It has now been confirmed he's on 150 at Chelsea. So if Arsenal really wanted this player, Terry, for the sake of another 20 grand a week, Right, 23 grand a week and 5 million euros. I'm pretty sure we could have got him, mate. But, but yeah. you could have, so we have now wasted from July. Done, bro, bro, to bro, now but you could have done, but you could have done. I think if you went in and go, okay, we'll match Chelsea's terms and we'll pay Mudrik the same as Chelsea have offered him. I think he picks Arsenal. And the thing is, so why that, didn't we then? Because you, the reason, because you didn't want to spend that much money. Okay, hold on, hold on. 20 grand a week, Terry. Yeah, right. 23 grand a week. That's a million a year. So we didn't want to spend, let's say he's on eight-year contract, yeah? We didn't want to spend, right? Yeah, 20 grand a week is a million a year. We didn't want to spend an extra 8 million plus, what, 4 million? So about 12 million. We didn't want to spend that extra 12 million on this generational so, salary. Lee, listen, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm telling you what they're saying, and this is the, my, my take. And this is my point. They're chatting let me, absolute let me, let me just, garbage, let me just, all let me just, of them. Let me just finish, though. Let me just finish. 
But as I say, of course, some journalists get things wrong. Some some reports never come. Yeah, to they life. get ninety nine percent of things wrong. Let's just let's just say that they, let's just say that, that that is what happens. Okay, journalists are not always accountable for clubs changing their minds. This is why I always say to people, and it's funny because Ornstein, even when Chelsea were flying him over, he wrote something that I've been saying to the viewers for ages. There's a difference between a done deal and a completed deal. A done deal is where everything is verbally agreed and it's going to happen. A deal being complete is when it's all signed. And only when it's complete is there zero chance of the deal falling through. We've seen players like uh, uh, Fakir, um, who literally, he, he, re he recorded his Welcome to Liverpool video, did his interview in a Liverpool kit, and the deal fell through. But the deal was done, and then it didn't, but it didn't complete. I, this, but the way, this is why I love the transfer window. That's why, you know, we always, when we do our transfer videos, it's based on what a journalist has said, and then we break it down, and then we give everybody the opportunity to have their opinions. I always love okay. the comments. Like, Wait, one second. No, no, I, sorry. I, I, you're, saying, you're saying it's all based on what a journalist has said, right? Now go through every single story of, just pick a journalist, go through every single news article they've put out over the last three seasons in transfer windows, and now tell me how many they've got right. It is less than 1%. Yet millions of fans across the world listen to these people. Bro, 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 the bro, 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 bro let me finish, bro. Let me, if you let me finish my sentence, this is the point I'm making. This is why I do the transfer stories the way I do the transfer stories. We present it as a journalist has said, it's advancing or they're looking at this or the deal is on or it's set to be. And some of these journalists I've never even heard of, but because uh, I, I, I was like the foreign ones who have got like m 2 million followers in their home country. And I'm like, well, clearly they're credible in Argentina or, or, or respected. And we do the story. And the whole point is, this is what's being said. I'll of course give my opinion. And it's like, viewers, tell us what you think. The, the comments <laughs> annoy me. The only comments, I don't care if people say, I think this is a bullshit story. Because I know they're not talking about me because I'm not claiming to be the source. The comments I don't like are, I'm not believing anything until X journalist says it. Do you know why that really annoys me? Because the amount of the transfers that actually come true, where the, or, or, or the originating journalist who broke it isn't one of the tier ones. The tier ones come in at the 11th hour and say, this is what's going to happen. Sorry, there is no tier one. There is no let me finish. The, the, I'm, that's, that's what social media people do by tearing them. That's what I'm saying. I don't take it seriously. I just use their language back at them. But that's why this is why I love the transfer window, though. And even when my team gets hijacked, I, there's a part of me that enjoys it because, you know, we, we're both from a sales background. I love a sale. And I'll tell you this now. Have you ever said you, you sold lots of things? You ever taken a sale of someone when they thought their, their, their one was done? I remember once I landed a bank account. <laughs> we, I took, I can't name who the person was because he's, he's, his business is quite famous. In the private bank, we, HSBC, were about to get his UK banking. And I, at the 11th hour, took it away. And it was worth like 60 million pound of assets Ooh, under management for the nice bank. Commission there, Terry. Hey, it was, it was a good year. It was a good year. Duck, turkey and goose for Christmas. And I remember landing it. And uh, do you know what I was most buzzing about? I was like, I need to see the, the face of the guy I've taken this deal from. And that's all I really cared about. I wanted to see his face the next day. But yeah, it's going to be a hot... Go on, mate. I was going to say, the thing is, Terry, right? Like, I, I look at it and I just think, like, somebody in the chat a minute ago said, why do you care? I care because this sporting director, technical director, whatever he's called himself, or the club have called him, right, is flying around the world on club expenses, nausing up deals. If you wanted Mudrick that badly, for the sake of 12 million quid more, you could have had him. That's facts now. That is out in the no, open. I, I, we can't change that. Bro, Not only I, that, I, I, the I worst that. bit about it is, Terry, is he has now alerted the whole world that we have got near on 100 million euros to play with. What an absolute idiot. Because if you wanted the guy that badly, spend the extra 12. If you don't want him that badly, why have you wasted all this time on him since July? Mm. It's, it's like, I'll give you an example. Yeah, I'll give an example. If, you, if you've been told by Shakhtar umpteen times that you are not going to accept less than 100 million euros, we want it with bonuses and packages, et cetera, et cetera, with add-ons and all that. And then you go in with 45 mil plus 10. Then you go in with 60 mil plus two. Like, come on. Like, at the end of the day, Terry, we're not in this 2014 era where you can lowball people and might they might fall some bro, bro, If let, you let, want let, it, bro, you get bro, it. Let me, let me just say, though, that, again, this is my the point I'm making. I think we're just kind of missing each other on points here. Hmm. 
it's not that I do or don't believe journalists. I say it all the time to people, read between the lines. Example being, when Jao Felix joined Chelsea, both Man United and Arsenal, via journalists, released pretty quick statements stating that oh, they weren't, we weren't that seriously looking at him anyway. That's where it's like, I, I see an Ornstein say it, and I'm not disbelieving Ornstein. Ornstein is literally just repeating what he's being told. It's your job as a human being with a brain to go, do you believe that briefing is true? Or do you think that's their way of covering up a rejection? Oh, no, I, to I totally get I totally get so what you're saying. What I'm, no, what I'm I saying is, what, you know, I get you. So what I'm saying is I don't take any anger out ever on journalists because, of course, they are. It, they're 100% a mouthpiece because they're just re reporting to you what, what the clubs what or players or agents are telling you. It's yeah. your job as a human being to, to, to go around things different. Now, it's funny. And, and this is what I'm saying. It's like, I'll give an example. Like, a journalist could write an article saying, um, I don't know, Arsenal... Um, uh, uh, sorry, Liverpool are linked with a move for Bukayo Saka. They've obviously got that information from somewhere, right? So now that goes out there. No, it's fake news. But then if you go, get a, um, asked a story from the same journalist that says, Arsenal are looking to put Bukayo Saka on 350 grand a week, everyone's going, oh, yes, we're signing Saka. So now you believe that, so it's true. And it's all subjective, I get that, and it's all whether you believe it or not. No, I, I, what, I what I've got the ump true. over with this, with this story is, the way so many people, yeah, so many people, right? And and fair play to the kid as well, by the way, Mudrik, because he done his own PR perfectly because he knows that our fan base will lap up anyone, yeah, like literally anyone. He's played twenty nine league games, Terry, twelve goals, and now he's hundred million. Why? Because he spent time twerking to the easiest pleased fan base in world sport, right? Which then took that, boosted him all around the internet. All the journalists are being fed information, right? And then all of a sudden, boom. Now Chelsea come in. We were basically the intermediary for Chelsea. That's basically no, I, what we I, were. I, I, I do get that, but that's about again. I am I'm always harsh on my club. We we got rejected for Darwin and we got rejected for Gakpo. We wanted both. I don't believe the club's PR of we sat on the fence and we waited and deliberated. We weren't sure. Liverpool came in and we stepped away because we weren't sure. For me, we got rejected. We tried our best. I don't believe the PR stuff that comes out. The reason I don't believe it. Is because whenever a team misses out, the PR is the same, whether it's Man United, Liverpool, yeah. Arsenal, Chelsea. And the fact that they all say the same things, it's like, wake up and smell the coffee. There's a comment here I yeah. want to read, because this, 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 this is important. It says, didn't Fabrizio say, here we go from Malassia to Lyon? Yes, he did. And that's why... I just said Party wasn't coming to Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me just say, though, he did, but that Fabrizio wasn't wrong. Here we go means the deal is done. But the deal is done doesn't mean deal complete, which is why... I created yeah. the terrorist's transfer emojis. Yeah. And they're all linked. When you read my threads and you watch my videos, we show you the source and who said it. And it's always linked to what's been done. So when Fabrizio says, here we go, it means it's a done deal. But a done deal can still fall through. This one fell through because before we signed the paperwork with Leon, Man United made contact and said, we're interested. So Malassia said, hold up. That's Look what happened when you had John Obi Mikel about to sign a contract with Fergie. He, did, he, did a contract. he signed it. Well, there you go. That was a here we go. He signed it. Exactly. <laughs> the point is, if, if a journalist said, if a journalist said, John Obi Mikel agree, agrees to join Man United, it's a done deal. And then two days later, he tears the contract to join Chelsea. That isn't the journalist's fault. When William... No, exactly. Was, exactly. Wait, let me finish. When William was sitting on the medical bench in the Tottenham training ground... <laughs> And then changed his mind. The journalists that said that William has agreed to join Tottenham weren't lying. I'll give you an even better example. When Ozil joined Arsenal, there were credible reports that there was a delay between medical and signing the paperwork. And what that delay was, was him and his team waiting because there was rumours Man United might come Man in for him that same day. In. And he was waiting. But the journalists that said that he's doing his medical with Arsenal wouldn't have suddenly been liars and charlatans. The deal would have just changed at the 11th hour, which is why the one thing for me is, I don't. you won't ever see me say, Deal complete until the that's what I do when I see him holding the shirt on the club website. That's mm. deal complete. Done deals still fall through all the time. All right. the time. The terminology. But people, but Terry, people are so dense they can't see that. I mean, there's so many people in this chat. I mean, their IQ is like it's mad. You know, like people, people sitting there, oh, you'll find everything to moan about. Blah blah blah. Yeah, at the end of the day, right? I didn't want Mudrick, so I couldn't care less if we signed him or not. I get that. Right. My point is, we have wasted seven months tracking a guy that the club wanted. doesn't matter what I want. 
is what the club want. The club wanted Mudrik and they spent seven months wasting their time to then not bother paying the extra 12 million, including wages. And now we've alerted the whole of the world that we've got that much money and we want a player in that position. So now every player we go for in that position, we are now getting the price put up here again. Rafinha, 100 mil. Diaby, 100 mil. Yeah, um, what's his name? Um, from Brighton. Matoma will be about 70 mil. Like Trossard will be about 40 mil. Uh, the price are going to go up now because that Edu is so incompetent, it is unbelievable. And people will say, yeah, but Lee, at the starting level, look how many players Edu signed. Okay, well, now look at the ones that he has signed that haven't worked. It's about 50-50. Yeah, so come on, let's slow down a little bit here. We could have had, when we're top of the league and everything's going great and that manager's overachieved after 18 games with that squad, which he has, and I've said it last week and the week before, Terry, he has, with that bench, it is disgusting. That bench is League One level. Right, we should have been sat there with the yellow ticker tape going across Sky Sports on the first of January. Arsenal have completed the deal for X, Y, or Z. Instead, we're sat here on day seventeen. We still need a bench because listen, we may end up winning the league without a bench. But why are we going to risk that? I, I hear you on that completely. I want to go through some of these super chats here and um, comments. First one says done deal means complete Terry, but it. I get in your mind it does, but clearly it doesn't. <laughs> when journalists, have, this is what I keep saying to people. When you've consistent, people people read tweets and don't listen to journalists because I must have heard journalists. Forget journalists. I've sat in rooms and I swear you were there that day in the studio oh, really? when John Smith was there. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah a was super there. agent, and he explicitly said to us, and this is the guy that this guy was the agent of Maradona, the agent of Gaza. This guy, this guy bro broke a deal for Arshavin to Arsenal. And multiple others. He, you know, this guy is seriously connected. He's been around. Everyone in the football world knows him. Mm. He literally said, like, done deals don't mean they're complete. I remember him telling me that face to face. In terms of... He told way, us about the Arshavin deal. Yeah, exactly. So what I mean by done deal... In the real world, a done, if me and you agree on something and it's a done deal, it's done. But until we sign the paperwork, it mm. isn't. And the reason I've, I've added an extra thing in when I talk transfers is I've seen probably 200 done deals collapse. So done in done deal in football doesn't mean it's complete. L same as net spend not being real yes. is true. And by the way, there's a super chat about this that says Kira Maguire, who is the world's leading football financial expert, has said Chelsea are likely to comply with FFP, an estimated 420 million spent on players so far this season on average of a si on six-year contracts works out at 70 million annual cost. So this season, they've spent 70 million pound on transfers so far, Chelsea. But, but, but Terry, trying to explain this to people in the chat that are just like dead from What's, the neck so up. So, so, so done deal, I've, done I've deal, been done, saying this on my channel sorry, about Chelsea. Done deal, about sorry. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. done deal doesn't mean done in complete in football. The same as net spend isn't real in football just based on this tweet. And Kieran Maguire knows more about football finance than every single journalist and every single newspaper put together. So trust in this. Thank you, God will. Uh, right, so, and, and that's the thing, Terry, right? They, they, why do you think this Mudrick's on an eight-year deal? Come on. Oh, so they can spread the cost. The only Thank way, you. The only people way... just look at, oh, my God, Chelsea has spent yeah. half a billion in six months. It, it how can they do that? Work like that. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's very much that. And they've probably got about 200 million quid's worth of players that are going to be sold in the summer. Even if they're crap and you think they're rubbish players, they will find a way to get 200 million quid back in. So then that 70 million will go down, right? With Because of their incomings, that 70 million will go down to about 40 million or 50 million a year. So them going out when they're debt free, by the way, because Roman left them debt free, they can go out and blitz whatever they want. But over the next three years, they have to balance the books. Well, straight away, you're telling me they're not getting more than 70 million income in the, in the next three years each year. Come on. Turn it in. You know, I, 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 I completely and utterly get you. I, I, I really, really do. Um, we're going to go through some more of these super chats and move on to some other subjects for you. Uh, uh, stop whining, stop whining is what AMT says here. Uh, Mate, I'm every, on every Tuesday. Like, I, I, you can't avoid it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll get through some. There's a lot to get through here. Uh, every team needs a bench, uh, even City's bench getting uh, smacked by Southampton. This is very true. <laughs> uh, I agree with Lee about Edu. He's constant uh, dithering in the transfer market, makes us look like a small yep. club. Get Arteta the players to compete properly, is what a generic user says here. Right. Um, I've got a bad feeling. Um, 
sorry, I've sorry, got a bad feeling. We are getting another mid, um, mid with a broke, broken back. Kim Kalstrom part two. Oh, that, that, that Kim Kalstrom was one of the weirdest transfers I've ever, ever seen before. I don't knock him, mate. He scored a semi final penalty to get us to a final. <laughs> uh, uh, on a scale of one to ten, how scared am I, am I of Arsenal? Uh, <laughs> eight and a half, nine at the moment, I would say. Something I can't like believe how many scared titles you're still putting out there, man. It's like you, you just you must lay there in bed subconsciously dreaming about, right, like, when I wake up, I'm going to put that title. Uh, the amount of, you must have done about 40 of them now. It's mad. I, I, will, I said to someone that I won't, it's not, but only about 12, 13. But I'll, I'll, I'll stop doing it when people admit they're scared or admit they're good. Then I'll stop. As soon as people just admit they're good, I'm then I'll, I'm, I'm like a dog with a bone. I don't stop. I don't stop. Uh, this comment here says, uh, Trossard and Yuri Tillemans aren't good enough. Zaha is good, though. Uh, Chike Trossard here and says, Yuri Tillemans are better than Marquinhos and uh, Sambi Laconga. So on that yeah. basis, they'll they're get on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I didn't just get through some of these stupid. So many. I want to get to the I want to get to the next call it anyway. All right, mate. Don't worry. GK here says, I believe that you give a coach manager at least three years to do a job. This is because I've seen teams in the NFL, like the Pittsburgh Steelers and Dallas Cowboys, go two and 15 and then win five Super Bowl titles between them, is what GK's got to say. This is very, very true. Uh, The market's ruined because of Anthony. It's not because of Anthony. Anthony's delivering. So it's all good there. Uh, This here from. Akil says we need a proven player uh, to back this uh, eleven and this manager uh, built built in the summer replenish now. Why are we slow? This gets uh, take this season seriously is what Akil's got to say. I hear you on that. Um, Lee needs to tell us which club had one hundred percent success. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to these ones with for Lee when he's here. Um, if they're for Lee, I'm going to wait for him to be here. Um, if our Tessa gets us top seven, it would be a success for this project and season. Now my worry is City or Real Madrid uh, go for him and Pep uh, when Pep and Carlo leave. Well, Jezza, this is this is what this comes down to is about Arsenal backing him and Arsenal paying him the going rate. And I had this conversation with Egal, and Egal kind of tiptoes around it. If Arteta becomes one of the best managers in the world and Saka is one of the best wingers in the world and Party is the best DM in the world and the goalie is the best keeper in the world, you have to pay them what the best teams in the world would be willing to pay them. That's why the scrimping and scraping over budgets and we have to keep it low only works so long. At some point, Arsenal will hit a crossroad if they're as good as we all think they are, where they have to pay the going rate or lose players. That's what essentially what happened under Wenger and why he lost all these best players because Arsenal weren't paying them what Man United and City and Real Madrid and Barcelona were willing to pay them. So Arsenal have to increase how much they spend. Because if you keep offering Mikel, if Mikel, if you win the Prem and next year you retain the Prem and win the Champions League and Mikel Arteta wants a new deal, you've got to make him one of the highest paid managers in the world. Otherwise, Real Madrid or Barcelona will. If he proves himself to be the real deal, you guys have got to step up. Uh, Jezza also says here, uh, Terry, uh, you both laughed at me when I said I, uh, we would win the league. Uh, we don't need some random players. Arteta right now is top three managers in the world. Oh, that would have been better if you had put, you both laughed at me when we said to win the league. Well, I must say, you're not laughing now, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, again, when you said, I, I didn't think Arsenal were going to win. I thought Arsenal would be good this you year. You thought Liverpool were going to win it. I, I just thought Liverpool would have, would have pushed on to another level after being so close last year. They've gone the mm. complete and opposite direction. It's crazy how bad they've been. But Jezza, thank you for that super chat, my friend. And on form, Arteta definitely is in the top 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 managers in the world right now. You wouldn't put him on a ranking list above people career wise yet who have won major titles. On, um, on form, I think we're the first, um, the, the quickest team to get twenty wins. I, I think yeah, right now I think you're, on form, you're the best team in Europe. I, I don't think that can be debated at all by 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 anybody. Uh, this super chat here says from Arteta being a useless coach to now someone. Uh, he needs to be back is a mad turnaround. It proves the guy was a good coach. No hate, just an opinion. I, I think it proves if you get better players, you get better performances. It's, and yes, and and, and I've, it, well, it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Let's be real. Look at Man United. You no, get better players like Casemiro, Varane in there, etc., etc., and all of a sudden you get a better level of performance than Harry Maguire and Scott McTominay. Structure. Quality so of that's what I'm saying, back him. It's, 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 it's a triple threat. You need a great structure and culture at the club, mm. a good quality coach and manager, and yep. great play, and good to great players. You have all those three things, you compete. It's 
It's and Man United and Arsenal, if you just look at the last decade alone, have always <laughs> had one or two of those three components missing. And Ars- Arsenal are getting to a point where they've got all three. Man United are getting to a point where they've got all three. And suddenly they're competing. It, it, I mean, I've just been asking for it for a decade and everything else. Uh, African uh, Giant here says, uh, this one's for Lee. Uh, I've not watched your content due to what other creators um, have said or insinuated about you. However, <laughs> the last few weeks have definitely shown, uh, shown me why uh, people shouldn't make assumptions based on others. Big up is what African Giant... Big up to you, saying. African Giant. Appreciate it, man. Uh-huh. The gunner there. Um, this says uh, Lee is here. We get the opposite. Are you my guy? It says Lee is disingenuous. If we paid Shaq to 100 million, it would have been another complaint from him. Like, why are we paying so much for Mudrick? Why aren't we a why aren't we smart with transfers? Lee just loves being miserable. Well, it's not, it's not about being miserable, is it? Why are we going to go and blow our load on a 100 million pound or 100 million euro player that scored 12 goals in four years? Yeah, that's playing in a league full of plumbers, mechanics, bank managers. It's a part-time league. right? So why are we going to go and... It's true, I'm not even lying. Why are we going to go and do all of our money on that player when we're already stacked in that position anyway, left wing, with Smith-Rowe and Martinelli? Mm -hmm. Why are we going to do that when we could go out there and buy a striker and a midfielder? Which, by the way, we didn't have a striker on the bench at the weekend. We were relying on Eddie and Ketia. What happens if Eddie gets injured? Then it's, oh, let's put Martinelli out front and put Smith Rowe on the wing. Okay, great. Fantastic. Cool. But then what happens if that goes wrong? Like, you have to think these things in, mate. Go and blow your load on a player that ain't even ready for now, that's not going to do a great deal now, one for the future. Well, the future's this season. Go and get what's required for this season, win the title, and then go and get a Mudrick if you want one. I I get that. Uh, AU follows up with Lee needs to tell us which club has 100% success on players they bought. And never missed out on a on a transfer. Um, it must be a common thing for clubs to get 100. percent In fairness, I looked at your stuff after last week. You guys have got like a 77 percent success rate under Arteta, which is pretty good. Which is pretty good. How did you work that out? Based on what who he's bought and who's been successful and who hasn't. Ronison, Tavaj, Pablo Marie, um, Cedric Suarez, Sam Conga. There, well, there's five straight away that ain't worked out. Marquinhos can't get in the team. There's six. William, they're seven. Nah, come on. Come on. Well, come can, on. can you give an argument to take them seven away then? Because I don't think you can. I, I look... I, I, it's I, not I, Arteta. I, I, it's Edu that's doing these I, deals. I, 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 you have I, I, Arteta I, I, on the committee as well, I, by the way. So he's I, not, Arteta's I, I, not fully to blame on all of these players. Uh, the, but they're the, seven. Yeah. It ain't 77%, yeah. Terry. It's probably about 60%. Probably less than that, 55%. Look, you know, me and you would probably disagree on who and who, has, I, 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 who hasn't made it. Did you say runner, sir? I didn't even... Is he a backup goalkeeper? <laughs> Man, I, I don't even think he was a goalkeeper, was he? Yeah, I mean, play, like for me, like I don't personally look at like fringe backup goalies. Like my Man United son, Lee Grant, I didn't even count it as a sign-in because it's not one that's meant to be... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we just signed... Oh, he uh, was our backup goalkeeper. Yeah, but... It, no, I, yeah, no, no, you can't be giving it... Yeah, I, no, I Terry, he was a signing and he was a backup I, goalkeeper. I, I, the ones look, that have worked have been great. Signings, so, Lee, I think when I look at flop signings, I look at players that you're bringing in to move the needle at your club. So I, I kind of get the point. The other names you mentioned, yes. But when it comes to, like, signing backup goalkeepers... I don't know whether they're flopped or they haven't flopped. It's, you know, it is what it is. But Matt Ryan's another one. There you go, Matt Ryan. And everyone, and there's people well, saying Ryan's he's wrote with Marquinhos, he's only 19, right? Well, no disrespect, mate. Right? When we when we needed somebody to come on in an attacking position against Newcastle, the manager didn't trust him. Yeah, everyone was telling me Sam Conga was going to be the second coming of um, Yaya Torre. Well, that's going well, isn't it? <laughs> so, listen, come on. Lukonga is definitely one that was on that list. Um, this comment here says, uh, hey, lads, uh, Chelsea and Arsenal offer the same amount uh, for Mudrick, uh, but the add-ons built into Chelsea's project and bid were more achievable and realistic, according to Shakhtar's CEO in the interview. Yeah, and we don't quite know what that means because he's not going to reveal that, that full amount. Some Chelsea fans say because it's Chelsea are more likely to win a Champions League than Arsenal. I think it's more, you might, the way these add-ons are sometimes done, Barca offered one to Liverpool once for, for Coutinho, which was win a Ballon d'Or and a Champions League in the same calendar year. And it was almost a case of that's both those things individually are hard to achieve. But in the same calendar year, that basically means you've got to be the best player in the world in the year your team's with the Champions League. And uh, Liverpool said, no, nah, that's just not achievable in that way. Um, let's, hope, let's hope Casemiro gets that yellow card. Yeah, I bet you do, my friend. Uh, I would rest Casemiro tomorrow. Can't take the risk. Mike 
Three points against Palace is more achievable than three points against Arsenal with or without Casemiro to get the three points in the bag and then and then and then see what happens, in my opinion. We could save Casemiro, drop points against Palace, and then still lose to Arsenal. For me, mm. three in the, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Mr. B, B for life says, uh, is Edu just incompetent or scuppering Arsenal? I think Lee's answered that question already in terms of what he thinks on him. Um, North London Derby, Lee. North London Derby. I know we haven't really uh, jumped into it too much as of yet, but North London Derby, what are you saying? What are you saying? How many times have I told you they're not our rivals? Man United are the rivals, Terry. Yeah, Chelsea should be rivals. Look at look at the two decades, last two decades they've had. Right, and then there'll be loads of people that are sitting there watching this going, oh yeah, but the football didn't start 20 years ago. Well, you was you born 30 years ago? Was you born 40 years ago? Did you see anything before that? No. So go off of what you've witnessed then. Yeah, like, listen, Chelsea were very successful five years before Abramovich turned up. They were winning cups and trophies before Abramovich. They had a better European pedigree than Arsenal before Abramovich. And now they've took that stratosphere's clear, right? So... No, Tottenham should not be Arsenal's rivals in any way, shape or form. That club is a loser club. That club don't win anything. The last time they won the league was in 61. My dad was free. Like, it's embarrassing. And I'll tell you what was more embarrassing. Yeah, the the um, the idiot that kicked our goalkeeper. Yeah, I, I hope that he just gets what can, what's coming to him. Like, club banned him already if they find him and, and maybe a jail sentence. But in terms of the game... Mate, as soon as I see their starting 11, I was just laughing. I was like, you are going with two in midfield against party Xhaka and Hodegaard. <laughs> and Zinchenko is going to cut inside. So that's four against two. <laughs> Cheers for that. I, just, I said, I said, I watched long. I said, Hodegaard's going to get the freedom of, the, of, of White Hart Lane. Then you go and you drop Perisic and you put Sessignon up against Saka. <sighs> like, it was just ridiculous. Conte is trying to get sacked. But for us, mate, we were unbelievably good, especially in that first half. Like, it, it was just men against boys. It was a training session. Like, Thomas Partey ne nearly scored one of the greatest goals you'll see in the North London derby. Like, that post is probably still wobbling. It's probably got a big dent in it. I'm surprised the ball didn't burst. And, and do you know what? If he had kicked it, if that had gone one foot to the right, it probably would have took out the fan that kicked Ramsdale anyway. <laughs> it probably I, was, would have. I was mad about uh, that goal. The best goal I've ever seen in North London derby was Danny Rose's volley on his debut. No, nah, no. Nah, Thierry Henry's goal, man. Come on. That, that one where he's got the statue of. Come on. No, I, listen, that, that was great. In terms of just, wow. Like, the one that got me the most was Danny Rose's. I think it was because it was his, a volley from a kid I didn't know. It was on his debut as well, wasn't it? On his debut. But that that parte volley mm. would have just been, as if we rephrase that, not maybe not the best goal, but the best strike I've seen in North London derby, if that makes sense. And David Bentley scored a good one against us. Yeah, but, but that was against Almunia. <laughs> Does it count? Yeah, David Bentley, that volley from Bentley was that was a was that the four four at the Emirates or three three or the four four three three or four four one of those two the Bentley I don't know I can't remember I think the Bent because we were four two up going into stoppage time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, they and then they Lennon scored they, right they, at the they, end didn't they, they? they yeah they did but yeah that was that, it, that, goal in that in the derby was good. but for me Omri's goal Omri's goal was the the best I've seen in the in the derby but mate we were superb like honestly absolutely quality. They couldn't get anywhere near us, right? And, and and you'd think like that's their cup final, that is their cup final. Literally, their their whole right philosophy as a fan base is we got to finish above Arsenal, we have got to beat Arsenal. That's it. Which is why they're they're not my rival. Like they don't look any further than that. Their fans are just like they're all crying about Conte and the players and Enoch and Levy, and none of them do anything about it. None of them. They're, they're just sitting there moaning without doing anything about it. Terry, that club is a shambles. Yeah, and then the day after that, they announced WizKids playing a, a free concert event there. <laughs> that, that club has no shame. They've just lost a derby at home, been absolutely humiliated, and then they announced that WizKids going to be gigging there. Yeah, well done, mate. Like that, that club. Seriously, mate. The only reason that club is anywhere near relevant is because our fan base make them relevant by watching their results every week, laughing at them every week. Who cares what they do? They've literally they've won three or is it three, four trophies in my lifetime, and I'm forty. Like, come on, we we've, we've won that in FA Cups in the banter era. Like, get in the bin. The performance was sick, mate. Absolutely unbelievable. Sakharad Sessignon on strings. 
Thomas Party was superb. Odegaard, what a goal. He obviously watches my streams. Uh, and he has done this season because he's smacking shots from everywhere this season. Top goal scorer. He, he won player of the month, rightly so. Mate, we're flying. Yeah, you, we are absolutely flying. And and have you had a change a, of heart? Like, have you had a change of heart on Odegaard? Because you said it was crap. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. If he plays like this, mate. Yeah. Then listen. If the, if that team play like this individually and collectively, then yeah, why not? Because at the end of the day, Terry, people are sit there like, if I had a pound for every idiot that said to me, "Are you still our tear out?" Well, are you still going to make excuses if we finish fifth next season? Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's the same question. Like, I've not... Terry, Terry, this club is starting to act like a big club for the first time in how long? The same as Man United. You're buzzing with Man United's performances. You're buzzing with how the club's going at the moment, yeah? Right? But if Man United finished fifth, sixth or seventh this season, yeah, you'd probably have the ump with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, and you'd be like, no, nah, it's unacceptable. Look, we were in a good position. We were playing great. But and and you wouldn't. But we need to do better, right? These fans sit there, and if we manage to capitulate and lose seven in a row and end up fifth, they will make an excuse for that. And that is the difference between me and them. Whilst we were finishing eighth, fifth, sixth under Wenger, fifth under Wenger, eighth, eighth, fifth, I weren't making excuses. I'm saying that's unacceptable. We got to strive to be the best, and it's nice that they've all caught up. It's nice that we're doing that, and it's nice that the players that I've publicly on my channel said, yo, Gibraltar guard. Well, he ain't Gibraltar guard this season. Yeah, he's flying at the moment. Thomas Partey, always injured. Well, he ain't been injured for a while. Ben White, Ben Shite. Well, he ain't Ben Shite at right back, is he? So the manager has to take credit for getting us top of the table. Yeah, and eight points top of the table. And the players have to take credit as well. They've been quality, man. I said, that. I think it was the end of last season and the start of this season. Saka needs to go up a level. Yeah, he needs to shoot more. He needs to be more clinical in them tight positions on the wing. This season, he's gone up another level. Yeah, and in fact, if anything, it's been Martinelli that's been slacking in the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> but every single one of them, Gabriel Magalhaes, the Bozo gene. He does have still the Bozo gene, but there's many other players that are better than him that have still got it. That are, Sergio Ramos is one. I heard Toby say that last night. Absolutely spot on. Sergio Ramos is one of the best centre-backs I've ever seen, but he'll have a Bozo moment where we're going to headbutt someone, elbow someone, get sent off. Yeah. But when he's had that this season, Saliba's been up there. When Saliba's had it, Gabriel's been up there. And Gabriel has been our best centre back, probably our best defender um, in away games, especially this season. Yeah. I think yeah? And this is Gabriel where people can't comprehend yeah. it, right? That when I sit there and go, you, they go, like, the amount of people, and I know if we even win the title, you shouldn't be celebrated. You shouldn't be saying, shut up. I'll do what I want. Yeah, I'll say what I want and I'll hold the club accountable when the club falls below my standards and the standards that were set by smashing that stadium down before most of these idiots were even born. But these idiots want to sit there and start running their mouths about, oh, but fifth because of this and eighth. No, 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 no. I was marching down Holloway Road, Hornsey Road, whatever it is, with a banner in my hand, trying to get Wenger out of our football club for finishing second to Leicester. Yeah, so what, what's changed? I ain't changed. My standards are still win the title, Terry, and it was back then. Now, all these people are finally caught up and we're flying. It's great. I'm loving it. I hope we do win it. And I actually think, do you know what? If we beat you at the weekend, yeah, then I'll probably nail my flag to the mast, mate, and say, I'm, I think we're going to win it. But we have, to, we have to get through that test first because I, I do think we're going to beat you, though. And, I, and then the reason I say it, I know we're going to talk about that in, uh, next week, but... I do think we'll beat you. And the reason being is because you... Uh, Terry's fucking getting... getting. He's, he's already text KJ, clip it, clip it. Yeah. But I do think that you having this game on Wednesday plays so into our hands, Terry. We've got the best home record, the best away record. I think we've, I think we've played more away games than we've played home games this season, I think. Yeah, we're flying. We've only lost one game. So, listen, people can sit there and chat rubbish about, oh, you are tethering. Oh, is it still Ben Shite? Is this Well, start putting in the level of performances. Stop just gassing players up without them performances. Start gassing them up when they're doing them performances. When they're consistently doing them, fantastic. You're seeing that for me now. When they're consistently poor, and let's have it right, Odegaard was consistently poor a lot last season. Ben White was at centre-back last season. Thomas Partey was constantly injured last season. Saka was constantly differing in final moments last season. This season, they've all gone up a level. So fair play to all of them. Listen, I, I, 
I've been praising Arsenal for a while now. Back in the last season, you saw me really starting to say, I, I think something's coming. Uh, I think something's being created. In terms of playing us this weekend, I'm keeping my lips firmly sealed until after a game against Crystal Palace. <laughs> But because I think our result against Crystal Palace is changes both our mentalities in that game, both our approaches to a degree. So it's hard for me to really say, but I think you're definitely one of definitely one of the favourites. But there is a super chat here. That are, are the favourites, sorry. There's a super chat here for you, Lee, from Carl, that says, uh, Lee, remember you bet £200 on, on Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't forgotten that. And I know you pop in the chat every week. Yeah. <laughs> He's making sure I'm cashing out, mate. Trust me. Hey, hey, how much? How much on a? How much on a cash out right now? Hundred and eighty quid. Hundred and eighty quid. I, I know, honestly, mate. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that happening now. So I'm gonna have to pay him, and I. But listen, I will pay you. A bet's a bet. I pay my bets. You know, like I always pay my bets. Listen, Chelsea have been shocking, absolutely shocking. But we have been flying, man. Yeah, only one loss. That's mad. Yeah, yeah. and I don't think yeah. even all these muppets in the chat saying. Um, saying what they're saying in the chat about me. I don't care. I'll be back again next Tuesday. I'm on the thumbnail. So when people jump in and say, oh, him again, it's clearly on the thumbnail a picture of me. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe go spec savers or saying, I don't know. But people I, I, saying, oh, Lee yeah. can't accept that he was wrong. Wrong about what? The aim of elite sport is to win the title or to compete for it at the very least. Finally, my club Listen, are competing. I, I, so I, finally, I, I'm I, 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 up I tell you what the issue is with you, Lee. It's, it's the way I say it, Terry. It's it's how you do. You are like there's an element of you, and just with how you say things online, that yeah. reminds me of Andrew Tate. Now I don't, I don't and, and what I mean is Andrew Tate. Listen, I'm not saying you, you're. I ain't going to jail anytime soon. For yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not doing anything that, that he's being accused of, or, or you yeah. know, all the all the sort of the, the, the misogynistic stuff or anything like that. I'm just talking about you say things in a way that is very harsh. But I often feel like you're underlying. I'll give you an example. Arsenal fans are offended when you say Spurs aren't even our rivals. Mm. And I'm like, you're not even deeping. You're not deeping how much of an insult that is to Tottenham. You're basically saying, I don't even look at you as a rival. You're that small and pathetic. Mm -hmm. For an Arsenal fan to go, that's disrespectful. It's like, no, you're missing it. It's so harsh. You're not even seeing how brilliant it is. Um, but Wickham here says, if players and coaches are were binned, uh, wouldn't be top. I mean, maybe not. Well, that, maybe well, that depends, doesn't it? Because if if we had if we had gone out there and and got different players, we might have already been twelve points clear by now. It's all if if some buts, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, everyone's great after the event, aren't they? Like, and I know you watch my channel as well, so big up to you. But everyone can talk after the event. Everyone can laugh about Potter. Everyone can laugh at Chelsea. Everyone can laugh at Conte. Yeah. Everyone can wax lyrical about Arteta now. But you all sat there making excuses for Arteta when we finished. Uh, fifth, four points no, ahead I, of Tottenham with three to go. I, I, yeah? I, I, All the excuses were out, Terry. They were out everywhere, mate. When we no, finished I, eight I, twice. I, I, I agree with you. It's, it's hindsight's lucrative. Um, Arsenal have improved, but when is Lee going to? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that when means. When is Lee going to improve? Improve what? I, I, mate, I, it's, I, not, it's nice that everyone's standards are now compete for a title. Finally, finally, you have all caught up. I, I, I want to say quickly as well, we are, part of the talk today was about Conte. I do think Arsenal have kind of broken Conte, though. I, I want to read you some comments. <laughs> that the, now, legitimately, like, I, it was already going wrong there. I, 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 today, right, I tweeted, he's getting sacked 100%. People are like, how do you know? How do you know? I'm like, read the room. This is what he said in it. He said in about the last hour or so. He said, um, <laughs> talk about his time at Tottenham. I've never seen the medical department explaining why a player is struggling to recover. Or the sporting director um, here, here at Tottenham explaining the club's vision, only one face to explain everything. This man is calling out his club massively. And he's also said that for him to like sign his renewal, he wants an increase on his current £15 million a year salary. So he should. So no, no this is yeah, 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 yeah. What no. Embarrassing for his career, yeah. Terry. <laughs> like, is, come on. Is, but Conte's doing everything to make Tottenham <laughs> not renew his contract and essentially sack him. What's really interesting about this, I want to get your take on it. Pochettino is now being linked. Um, very credible journalist from the sort of Spurs standpoint, a guy called Daniel um uh, Kilpatrick, who Spurs fans really trust, think knows a lot of people at the club. He is now talking about Mauricio Pochettino coming back. Is that the direction they've got to go in? Is it like Poch coming back? Is that what's key? Or 
that I just need to move on to something completely new. This is what I said to you about 10, minutes, 10, 15 minutes ago about that club, right? They are irrelevant, Terry. Yeah, their fans can't even protest properly. You had the B-Tech Ed Sheeran outside the stadium with a banjo and you had a woman holding up or a man holding up uh, a club shop bag on a protest. Like five people stand there having a banjo. Like, yeah, that's, that club is a shambles. Their fans, yeah, their fans need to do more. Right, and and when and I said this, I went on um, Savage Channel yesterday, and I was saying to him, "Look, if you want to, if you want to have change, right, all oh, great, bringing Poch back. Yeah, your fans are lap that crap up, and that's another PR move from your football club. Like them, they, they are now um, more interested in selling out concerts, boxing events, NFL than they are about winning on the football pitch. Yeah, that in itself should be enough to anger every single one of them Spurs fans." The fact that they announced that Wizkid is playing there the day after they got battered in a North London derby, they should be going nuts. But they're not. They're not. And they won't. And they'll all turn up and, and pay their money again next week. Yeah. And then when you sit, speak to people that have got season tickets, oh, but it's hard to give up a ticket. Well, it ain't if you want the owners out and you want change and it's not happening. And I said this when, when we had the problem with our owners, right? If you want the ownership out and you're not prepared to give up your season ticket, you are part of the issue. I don't like you. I can't stand you. But here's another grand. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it's true. So at the end of the day, Poch can go back there all he likes. What's he going to do? What is he going to do? Nothing. He did nothing when he was there. He'll do nothing again. He won absolutely zero trophies, Terry. But that fan base will lap up. Hashtag Poch back. Poch back to do what? Still be irrelevant. Like, no disrespect. They are irrelevant. Yeah, so they can do whatever they like. They can take Poch. They've gone down the tried and tested with Conte. That ain't worked. They've gone down the tried and tested with Mourinho. We got them to a final. They sacked him. Yeah, which was dumb. Because if anyone's going to shit out a 1-0 victory in a final, it's him. And they sacked him for Ryan Mason. Come on. Let's be real with it. Yeah, that, that club are so far gone daniel levy but somebody was was telling me this yesterday daniel levy bought him um shares into that football club i think he owns 20 or 30 percent of enid they brought that for i think 20 million quid that football club it's worth billions well this what do you think he, do you think he cares the thing is with the majority of the people that have bought football clubs you know the glazers were them hicks and gillette are others um the enid group a lot of them are buying they're buying it on the even chelsea's owners top bowley they're not, they are, they're, it's harder now because you have to make the team successful to grow it. But they're all, they all, they all bought, bought these clubs with the, with the vision of one day selling them for large amounts of money. The reason that, that, that Sullivan and Gold, obviously, God rest, uh, it, was, it, it was Gold that died recently, wasn't it? Not Sullivan, Gold. Yeah, Gold. Um, yeah. Like they bought it and they knew that the, West Ham had an opportunity of getting the Olympic Stadium because they wanted it to be attractive for a billionaire to come in and buy it from them in five to 10 years' time for two. For two billion quid, maybe three billion quid, maybe so they make a huge amount of profit. That's that's what a lot of people are at. But yeah, Can listen, I read this comment out very quickly oh, from oh, Mono oh. Mono El Pastor. Yeah, it says giving up your season ticket is a horrible strategy. The owner would love nothing more than a season season ticket holders to give them all up to sell them for more money to tourists. Whilst that's true, if you're sitting online and you're moaning about the ownership of your football club, and then you're putting money into that football club, then you're part of the problem. By you giving up your season ticket, you're saying, I don't want no part of this anymore. Adios, amigo. Yeah. Bye bye. Doesn't matter what they do with your ticket after that. You've done your bit. You're mate, refusing mate, to do what, what you're doing now by giving up your ticket. If they sell it for more money, you've done your bit. That ain't your problem. You ain't wasting your money on that, that, that person it's, it's, or that club that mate, is not doing what you want. Spot on. And people always, the, the crazy part about it is as well, this notion that Man United and Spurs would just sell 75,000 and 60,000 tickets respectively every week, home and away to tourists. It, it's a fallacy. It's actually, they would sell thousands, there's no doubt, but you know, it would sound like soccer aid. And then the first thing that would happen is Sky Sports and BT Sports and the companies paying billions of pounds a season to broadcast. It would say, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no atmosphere at these stadiums. It sounds like a, it, people have got to understand that we control. I saw what those Everton fans were doing the other day to the players, disgraceful. Stop going. Like, people don't understand that if you hate the way your club's being treated by owners, you giving up the money and not going and sacrificing you being there 
is more damaging than anything else that you can do. The difference is, is that people don't want, I know what it is. People don't want to give anything up. This is, this is 2023 in a nutshell. I want to moan about everything and virtue signal, but I'm not prepared to actually sacrifice anything. And I watched it. This is completely off subject, but it brings me back around to the moralistic standards of people. I don't moan about lots of bad things in the world if they benefit me. And what I mean by that is I don't condemn Apple for where they make iPhones because I want to use one. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm not willing to give up my smartphone. So I'm not going to moan about where it comes from. I don't protest about how Amazon treat their staff because I'm not going to stop using Amazon Prime. I am not prepared to give it up. So therefore, right. I don't moan about it. I watched the Joe Rogan podcast the other day, and there was a guy on it that spoke about mining that's going on in a, in, a, in a nation within Africa, where they basically get the minerals for the batteries that go into every single smart device and every single um, laptop. And he was explicit, this guy. He showed footage of 15,000 people, the conditions they work in, the way they're treated, is borderline slavery. And he was essentially saying that the, this is one of the pits that the big companies say they take their, they take their, they get the batteries from, the minerals of the batteries from, and it's deemed as like clean, right? And good. And, and I'm basically looking at it again. See, this just ruins every virtue signal online. Because if you really cared about, the, the, if you really did care about every other human being around the world, like you pretend to online, you'd all give up your iPhones today after seeing this, but none of you will. And that's just how I view the world. The only time I want to hear you moan is when you're willing to sacrifice something within yourself to make the world better or right. help your football club or to solve a problem. If you're not willing to sacrifice, keep your mouth shut and keep it moving. I don't want to hear you moaning. Do something or shut up. That's the way it's got to be. Um, right. Just on some breaking news that's come out, um, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his team have announced that they have um, formally entered the bidding process for Man United and official bids are now going in. Uh, new owners. For the 19th late. time. And he's still ain't put the money on the table yet. <laughs> uh, so Jim Radcliffe and his company have got the money, but they've they got, they got, they got... Oh, yeah, bidding. they're minted, but he still ain't put an official bid in. They've done it. They've entered the bidding process. It's official. Okay, fair enough. Fair like enough. Official, official news. Their statement has said they've entered, they said here that... Um, they have entered uh, the bidding process to buy Man United. So Jim Radcliffe has confirmed that he is officially uh, in the running to buy the football club. Uh, this super chat here says, Lee, you failed to understand that process comes with time. Uh, you were in in insulting to our players and manager because you were short-sighted. Sorry. Did it make you cry? And secondly, what what um, can you can you tell me? Yeah, um, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. Like, can you can you tell me why why they don't have to? wait for years and years for anything to happen because these were the clubs that we smashed the stadium down to compete with by the way and that was how long ago thank you yeah i've been more than more than patient enough mate thank you very much and good night no i get that a few people are saying to me terry would you give up your iphone my point is this i don't i want my first point of call would be i would want them to change where they're getting the lithium from or at least the people that are working there make it safer pay them properly make it a, a good environment to be in but when it, when it comes down to it, if it doesn't change, would I give up my iPhone? The answer is no. like the rest of you, probably not. And, no. But that's what. But that's why you won't see me out here, bit pretending to pretending to be an activist. If someone's an activist, but they're uh, someone's like a climate change activist, and literally everything they wear, everything they do is completely carbon neutral. They don't participate in anything. They don't ever fly anywhere. They don't go on boats. They don't drive cars. I've got so much respect for those people. But people that like. When the celebrities that have private jets and yachts moan about carbon footprints, I can't listen to it because it's like you're mad out there. Uh, Lady Gaga replaced Conte. Can't read her poker face. <laughs> 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 that was actually quite funny. Uh, there was another question I wanted to ask you very quickly. We haven't got enough time to go into the full story. Declan Rice to Arsenal, yes or no for you? It's not going to happen, but I'll take him. It's not going to happen. And I love how these stories are all about next summer, next summer, next <laughs> summer, next summer. How about starting this this January? How about how about signing some players now? And we worry about next summer, next summer. Yeah, no, I get you. I, I do get you. Uh, Terry, activists at least raise the question. Yeah, no, that's, but that's what I just said. Let's raise a question. But if the question doesn't get answered, what's next? If you're not prepared to sacrifice for it, then mm. stop. Because otherwise it's just moaning. And that's that's my point to people, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't got the answers. I don't pretend to do. And there are a lot of things in the world that need changing. But when you bring it back to football, 
you're not happy with how your club's being run, you have the power to walk away and show real love. Real love is pulling your money, not funding the people that you say are ruining your club. That's the opposite to love for me. Uh, Ever uh, Everton fans are an example of that, Terry. Uh, 110%. At least Arsenal fans didn't leave the country. At least Arsenal didn't leave the country. That's at you, Lee. <laughs> why, would, why, why, why would I live in England? It's a fucking cesspit, mate. <laughs> it's, 20, it's 24 degrees outside. I don't need to put my heating on. I don't, I don't need to worry about my heating bills. I don't need to walk down the street and worry about getting stabbed by some random guy who I've never met before in my life. He might just want to rob my wallet or my phone or my bicycle. <laughs> if anyone thinks that living in that country is a wise idea, mate, I suggest anyone who works online that can work online, go and look at a digital nomad visa and go and tour the fucking world, mate, because that country is buried. And on that bombshell, cheers. There we go. Listen, everybody that has tuned into the show today, I've got mad respect for you all. Please hit the like button before you leave and subscribe. We're live after Wolves Liverpool tonight. Uh, Lee Gunner, always a pleasure to speak to you, my old mucker. Oh, I appreciate you, Terry. All the haters in the chat appreciate you too. I'm going live with Rants eight minutes ago, so you can all come and join in on that chat as well if you want. There we go. There we go. Get across <laughs> there and watch it. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again soon.